my squad kept going until we couldn't go no further. That's when my machine gunner got killed and I got wounded. I can remember when I landed on my back and I was engulfed in this, this cloud of dust and dirt because I couldn't see anything that was surrounding me. And so as I'm trying to clear my eyes, I'm seeing the damage that's done to my arm and I'm realizing that I can't get up and I'm realizing that, you know, trying to catch my breath, the wind was knocked out of me from the concussion of that explosion. But I went back into the engagement after being shot for three different other Marines that I brought out. I wind up getting the Purple Heart, yes, from the wound that where I got shot in the chest. I am the recipient of six Purple Heart Awards. Purple Hearts are given to veterans that are combat wounded related under combat conditions against a foreign nation. The Purple Heart Cane Project is one way the Indian River Woodcarvers Association does its part to recognize and thank our Purple Heart veterans. This club has been around for a while. We are a Florida not-for-profit. No one here gets paid to do anything. Uh, we do it to pay it forward to the community and to these veterans. It makes you feel great that you're cared about, you're wanted, and to accept this cane, it makes you very proud of that uh, these people who took the time out to carve this and put all this together, they cared about us. I, I saw a fellow carrying the cane and somebody asked him what the cane was all about. And so I said, well, I'll put the Purple Heart on the back side of the cane. As you're walking, when you're carrying it like this, it would be out front and there would be no need to ask somebody what, what the cane was about. I draw the Purple Heart on there and then I uh, would burn it to give me a line so I can paint to, because I'm not the greatest painter in the world. I still, I still favor the original ones where the handle comes out of your bag, you know? The canes are made out of basswood, sometimes butternut. We have two basic uh, styles. One we call the long head, which is an exaggerated head, and uh, the short round head. Once the carver is done with the head, the shaft is applied and stained. Then we will put on the applique. The applique will be on the front side with his name, his unit, the Purple Heart and when he was wounded. On the back will be all his ribbons and awards, his rank and when he was in the service. I do about, I think, six, six or seven canes a year probably. They send letters that are unbelievable. I have one in my, my bag right now. Um, it, it's just, and again, they say, this means more to me than my Purple Heart medal. I, it, it, there's no value you can put on it. You don't you hit the screw then, do you? No, I go down the screw and it comes down yeah. about here. Coming from the Vietnam era, we weren't used to having these types of things given to us, but. I'm very proud to have accepted it and very proud of uh, the Indian River wood carvers. Well, that, that is the, 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 the feel good feeling you do if anybody gets when you're helping somebody else out, regardless of what, what it is. So that, that's the only reason, I mean, you know, I do it. And I'm carving my first Eagle Head cane. The thing that impressed me about the program was I've heard so much on TV about you know, we got to do something for our veterans and something for our veterans. And I don't see that in the political scheme that we do that much for them. And it was my way of giving something back to the veterans who I think have to be admired for the sacrifices they take. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. I uh, sat last night in my room 
preparing to come speak to you all, and as I did that, I was staring at my cane, and the thoughts that I jotted down were this, the insignia that I was looking at on it, the ranks, the medals, the campaigns that are represented today on each one of these canes that are going to be presented, they're a testament to the character and the unwavering commitment to this amazing nation by each one of those recipients. So I was aware that the Indian River woodcarvers made Purple Heart canes for wounded veterans. And I ran into them at an event here in, in the community and I asked them, where do you do your presentations? They said, well, we go to the Moose Lodge or we go to their house, it's not really a big deal. I said, well, why don't we try it at the museum? I said, how many canes do you have to give out? He goes, well, maybe 12 or something like that. So we tried it out here at the museum inside before we redid everything, and we got about 100 people. The last band of brothers was here, some guys from Iwo Jima. It was, it was very nice. The next year, we decided it was big enough that we had to have it outside of the memorial wall, and by now, which is about seven years ago, it's grown to 400 people. We know that these people give hours upon hours of their time, both in carving the canes, but also in doing the research for the veterans who are deserving of these canes. The museum is happy to support that because, again, we feel that it's a worthy cause and we're so happy to partner with them and provide a venue for them. Corporal Koloski entered the Army on the 31st of March, 1943. He was wounded in combat on the 7th of February, 1944 at Anzio, Italy. He was also awarded the Bronze Star. Some of those people, you know, they haven't heard a thank you in years for their service. They were like absolutely thrilled that they were receiving and then to actually see who, see who they were. And there were people that were in their 90s that drove all the way up from West Palm Beach and it meant everything to them. Lieutenant Colonel Webster entered the Army on the 28th of January, 1966 and served with distinction through the 28th of February, 1986. He was awarded the Purple Heart four times. And when they come to receive these canes, it's just awesome to see that they come up. It's so moving for them and for their family to be honored so many years later. We have a lot of World War II vets that come to receive these canes and it's such a touching time. And it's, it's a great uplift, I think, for, the, for them, for the community, for the woodcarvers, for everybody. He was wounded in action on the 29th of June, 1970. At it just touches you and Dallas hands these canes to these guys. And, and these guys don't cry. I mean, that, but their eyes sweat, you know, and it's, it's humbling. Hoorah! It's a wonderful feeling. You go up and they present your cane to you and it's lovely and you enjoy it. It's a cane that you never will want to put, well, you got to put it down because it's so lovely you don't want to carry it around banging it up but mine hanging on the wall in my home. I mean, I was just blown away. We never got any recognition when we came back from our military service. Um, we didn't know about PTSD or any other ailments that we fed you know, fellow veterans today. This came, I don't, can't remember how many years later, 40 years or so. So it's, it's like an acknowledgement for the service that we did or provided at that time, which the next generation is now doing. I would be remiss if I did not take time to honor those men and women who made the supreme sacrifice who are not with us today. I am a Gold Star mother. I became a Gold Star mother on November 7th, 2010, when I got notice that my son Dale J. Cridlow was killed in action in Afghanistan. Sometimes we forget that the ultimate price has been paid by some of our veterans. Corporal Dale Cridlow entered the Army on the 31st of December 2008 and served in Afghanistan with the 161st Engineering Company. He was killed in action on the 7th of November 2010 in Kunar Province near Buri Ali, accepting his cane in honor is his mother, Michelle Dale. Well, during the service, when everyone was receiving their cane, and my name was called to receive it for Dale, 
and I got to actually see it and feel it and see his name on it and the Purple Heart and hold it and understand the the love and the respect that went into it. It was a very honor, honoring and humbling experience. The gentleman who carved this cane are an amazing breed of people. Ironically, I met two of them at a Christmas party last year. We were at a party and we were talking about veterans and our connection with the Veterans Council. And I happened to mention that I was going to get a Purple Heart cane in January. And they said, oh, we're carvers with the Indian River Carving Association. And it was so honoring for me to speak with them and understand the love and respect that goes into each and every one of these canes. When these guys come up, and women, to see the gratitude and the appreciation they have. Uh, I, I can't explain uh, in words, I'm not that great, uh, but to give something that is that tactile to somebody to hold and go, this is mine, this is my record, this is staying in my family, this is a remembrance of my son or my daughter, and, or this is what I've done and to hand down.